I would not do that right now unless it's an emergency emergency. You're going to want to stay and get all these answers. All right. Um, so here we have a function. And the function is labeled g of x. And what we're doing is I gave a whole bunch of limits. Now, in this one, I'm not just doing general limits. I did left-hand limits, right-hand limits. So what we're doing is we're looking for the value that the, function, that the function is approaching, the y value that the function is approaching, as x approaches different values. Okay. Now, again, just remember, guys, when you have that little like, negative up there, that's saying it's approaching from the left side. So you find the value, like negative 4, and you say, all right, so as I approach negative 4 from the left, which is like my left hand, you can see that, well, from the left of negative 4 is over here. So as I'm approaching negative 4, x value negative 4, from the left, I'm getting really, really close to what y value? You're approaching 4, right? So we could say the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left is equal to 4. Yes. OK, so you have all of the arrows going from x to the right. Could we ever write it, like for our sake, could we ever write like uh, x on one side going to the left and then x? Like, so if we were approaching like x from, from the, the Yeah, I mean, that I can say that makes sense, but that's not like your standard notation. So um, prob people probably wouldn't know what you mean by that. So we just rate, we write it and read it as x approaches negative 4. And that little the reason why the left is like from the left. x approaches negative 4 from the right. That little plus just means from the right-hand side. So yeah, I would avoid just doing something that's not, at least, at least their standard notation. So now let's go and take a look. What about as we approach negative 4 from the right? So we look at our graph. We kind of take our right hand. We say, all right, well, let's follow this graph from the right. As we approach from the right, we get really, really close to which y value? Negative 2. Now, this is helpful because if we want to identify what is our general limit, the general limit is the value that our function approaches from the left and from the right. And what we notice is, if I want to find the limit as x equals negative 4, they don't, they don't apply to the same, they don't approach the same value, right? So guess what? The general limit does not exist. Uh, the limit as x approaches 0. Sometimes people are like, ah. So say, well, guys, limits don't always have to occur at discontinuities. At x equals 0, we have the function is equal to 2. But as you guys see, as we approach from the left and through the right, what value are we approaching? 2. So it's a little gimme in there. But limits don't always have to approach at discontinuities. They're more likely to approach at discontinuities um, for algebraic reasons, which we'll see. But they don't always have to go to there. Uh, next one. What about as we approach negative 6 from the right? So as we're going from negative 6 from the right, we're getting really, really close to which y value? Zero. Zero. What about as we approach the general limit from negative 6? So from the right, we're approaching 0. From the left, is there anything on the left? No. no. So is it even possible to approach from the left or there's nothing there? Not really, because I get, so since we don't have anything to the left, we can't approach from the left, right? And since our definition says we have to approach for the same value from the left and the right, this is, does not exist. Um, 2 from the right. So as we're approaching the value of 2 from the right, now again, here's a hole. But again, guys, doesn't matter if it's a hole. doesn't matter if there's a point there. We're looking for the value which it's approaching, which is 0. As we approach 4, now this is an asymptote, right? But as we're approaching 4 from the right, you guys can see that we're going all the way up to infinity. And as we approach 4 from the left, or wait, this is just, as we approach 4 from the left, we're going down to negative infinity. Well, since we're not approaching the same, since we're going in different directions here at 4, we can definitely say it does not exist. Now, technically, real quick, technically from 4 from the right still is, does not exist because you're not actually approaching a y value. Infinity is not a value. But a lot of times we give the direction that the graph is heading um, when we're approaching like an asymptote or like n behavior or something like that. Like we give the direction because the direction is more specific than does not exist. right? But technically, 4 positive does not exist because you're actually not approaching a value. Yes? You wouldn't have you wouldn't have like to choose between does not exist and infinity, no. So that's what I'm just saying. Like technically, it does not exist, 
but we often rather you just label the direction. So we give you answer choices as like infinity or negative infinity. Which actually brings up my point. This obviously does not exist because they're not even going in the same directions. But if my graph looked like that, then a lot of times we'd say limit as x approaches 4. You can see the direction from both sides is both going down to negative infinity, so we'd give the answer of negative infinity. Or you'd see the answer of negative infinity as an option. Just a little FYI. <laughs>